I am actively avoiding recording this right now. And I think it's because I keep trying to make it complicated. Like I keep trying to, ooh, some self-worth shit is coming up for me right now. Am I still crooked? I keep trying to make this complicated. I want it to be fun and I want it to be entertaining and I want it to be like the vloggers that I look up to and watch on YouTube, but I'm just fucking starting. So I just need to start. I feel like I keep trying to make this complicated so that I have a justification to avoid doing it because it's too hard. And yeah, that's that's pretty much, I think, what's coming up for me. I have a justification to procrastinate it because I'm like not there yet. So we're gonna do the simple. I don't even have the book here. Okay, let's do it again. I had a really bad migraine yesterday and I was supposed to record this on the weekend and you know, my energy just wasn't there. I talked about this on my Instagram stories about how like it was an earth moon on the weekend. So I thought making myself an outline for the vlog would have helped and it did. I felt a lot better with it, but like I have all these B-roll shots, like making my bed and doing my skincare and I just feel like I'm not there yet. You know, I'm just not there yet. I am gonna simplify this for myself so that my brain can actually wrap its head around doing the thing, hitting the record button hitting start, getting the thing done. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. At the end of the day, having something and connecting with you in some way, shape or form is what matters. Do I want it to be entertaining? Yes. Like I mentioned before, do I think my self-worth is coming up that me, just myself is not entertaining enough for you and I have to have all these like fancy shots and different angles and all of the things that I really love watching on vloggers. And I want to get to that point, but I have to realize that I'm just not there yet. I'm just not there right now. So let's make this simple. I need to figure out what I want to say. Also, if you love my content and you want to support my content creation process, I do have a link in the description below for my exclusive content shop on Ko-fi. So that is available for you if you want to continue supporting my content creation process. As well, I do have a free Facebook group. It's going to be a really amazing place to talk about the book that we are doing today and for the next seven weeks. That link is also in the description below as well. Yeah, I don't really want to say something triggering right now, if I'm going to be completely honest. Okay, I need to put my phone away. Mantra for me for the last few months. I need better boundaries. I really hope that's on here somewhere. Something that we deal with. Like, I need, I need better boundaries around my phone. I didn't really resonate with, like, the dieting part of this. And I'm not saying... She she specifically talks about not dieting and like the intro of it talks about how she was talking to somebody in a nail salon and you know her coaching was that she t she coached women on how to quit dieting. So that's kind of where she's coming from, which I like. But there was this part that I I put she says, I tell my clients, if you've got some excess weight that you'd like to shed, Bear will definitely help with that. But even if you're not interested in losing weight, do the Bear process anyways, because there are so many benefits to this process. Benefits that go way beyond the surface level physical stuff. So that was a little encouraging for me because when I first started to read it, I was like, oh fuck, what did I get myself into? Like, did I not do enough research on this book? Reading that was really encouraging for me and and it, it, it kept me kind of pushing on. The next thing I wanted to talk about that I really enjoyed that was not like a takeaway or anything, but something I really felt like she put succinctly is I consider myself a fierce, outspoken feminist. I believe that being a feminist comes down to one key word, choice. I love that. I think that is such a beautiful, beautiful way to succinctly describe what feminism is. Fucking choice. I get to choose what I do for work or if I don't want to work. I get to choose what I want to wear or not wear. I get to choose what I want to 
do and eat and all of the things. So I thought that was really, really beautiful. And then I have one more note here. The whole, oh fuck, I probably should have started with this. The whole thing for week one is cleaning up your environment. She goes through a lot of different areas in the life. And she talks about why we're, we focus on environment food first and not food or exercise because our environment shapes our reality. And this is something that I talk about a lot, especially in like spiritual work and spiritual practices and making sure that when you're starting your day off, you start it on your foot and, you know, focusing on gratitude and all the things. You guys know I talk about this stuff all the time. I don't wanna sound like a broken record, but our environment really shapes our reality and how we look at our environment really shapes our reality. When I was going through this, it kind of started off where I was like, I was a little bit on like a high horse. I was like, oh, well, I don't do that and I don't do this. And then we started to get into like the physical spaces and I was like, oh, like I'm looking at my uh, office closet right now and it is a hot mess in there and that was my initial goal to be completely honest was to clean out my office closet because I've been procrastinating it for literally months at this point but I decided I was not going to do that because it just became too daunting and I think the other part that I do want to clean up for this vlog is going to be more entertaining and it's something that I do actually see every day. So my office closet is kind of like bugging me at the back of my mind versus what I am going to clean today is something that I see every single day. Going through the different areas, she explains, you know, like upgrading your environment, upgrading your life, because what we see, what we focus on is what we then start to look for in our environment. And this one place she talks about is like cleaning up your media environment. This is where I was like, oh, well, I'm pretty good at this already. Like I make sure that I don't follow accounts that make me specifically feel shitty about myself. Now, there is a really thin line between accounts that make me feel shitty about myself, but that force me to reflect on things I actually need to reflect on versus accounts that just feed off of shame marketing. Thin line, it's important to discern the difference between those because it is important to make ourselves uncomfortable and push ourselves out of that comfort zone and think about, you know, perspectives that we might not have lived or experienced or thought of. But there's a whole other there's a whole other area around there that's like, well, this just makes me feel like absolute shit about myself. I don't partake in that. And this this one part I highlighted, I know a woman who used to wind down every evening by reading a celebrity gossip blog. <sighs> I have a hard and fast rule that I don't participate in gossiping. My thing is though that like, I'll never say something behind your back that I wouldn't say to your face. That is a hard and fast rule that I live by. I just believe in being honest and I believe in being genuine and I, cannot stand two-faced people that are one thing to my face and then something else behind my back. I won't live that life. It just honestly feels exhausting to me. I actually just posted on Instagram about how I hate April Fool's Day because I feel like it's just this holiday that is surrounded by lies. Like the whole point is to deceive people. And I'm like, I just don't feel like that's fun, but I digress. I don't subscribe to gossiping about people. I don't like it. I think there are so many more interesting things to talk about that talking shit about somebody is just not one of them. And I have a really hard time when I see like tabloids and stuff because I remember when Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were going through their separation and were going through their divorce. I had such a hard time seeing these tabloids in the grocery store because I'm like, I get that they're celebrities, but like they're fucking people. And this is a really painful experience that they're going through that people are finding entertainment out of. Like that just makes me so fucking sick to my stomach. It just, it genuinely makes me sick to my stomach that people find entertainment value in, in watching these people's lives like implode. It's just hard. It's hard to watch human beings treating other human beings like they're not human beings. And I get it that they, celebrities have a certain level of privilege that, you know, everyday people don't. 
but it still doesn't take away from the fact that they're still fucking human. Then she goes on to talk about like, like TV. Oh, right. So like TV shows and all of that kind of stuff. So I've already cleaned up my social media. I talked about that TV shows. I don't really watch TV shows. And I, when I do watch a TV show, like I purposely watch something that is, makes me feel good. Like TV for me is a bit of like an escape and something that I want to watch things that don't make me think. That's the point of TV for me intentionally. So I watch really stupid shows and I don't watch reality TV because I feel like it's the same fucking shit. Then she moves on to like cleaning up your home environment. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> this I need a little help with. So the space I chose to clean for week one of this book is my nightstand. And this I use as like a little altar for myself, but right now it's just, hi. Hello. This is your little space. This is your little space. Like Matthew and I are hoarders. So like our kitchen is very cluttered. My car is pretty good, to be honest. Like I don't really have a lot of stuff in my car. Like I said at the beginning, I wanted to record, no. I wanted to clean the office space or the closet space in my office, but I opted to do my nightstand because I just feel like a my nightstand will be a lot more entertaining. I have like my humidifier and all of these things. So I think it'll be really entertaining to watch me do that. But also, like I said at the beginning, it is something that I look at each and every single day. And if our environment affects our mental space and I see that when I wake up and I see that when I go to bed, then that affects how I sleep and that affects the rest of my day. So that's the environment I chose. I just kind of wanted to wrap up the rest of the chapter here. The next one was cleaning up your social environment. So like your friends, frenemies and social obligations and your calendar. This again, I've already done a pretty good job on. This has also really shown me how far I've come in my journey. I remember when I was still at my nine to five job, like you had to book me like three weeks in advance to hang out with me because that's how like succinct my calendar was and how packed my calendar was. And I was very much a yes person. And I would put myself out just to show up to something because I said that I would. I would later realize that this was like a lot of my abandonment, abandonment issues rearing its head. This is like a really good like reflection place for me. And for people who haven't really started, this is a really great starting place. So I, I've enjoyed the book so far. The assignment for this week is to choose one aspect of your environment to clean it up. And she does make a point to say, don't try to do everything all at once. So in my head, I was like, oh, I could clean my office closet. I can clean out the kitchen and get rid of gadgets that we don't use. I could clean up my nightstand, I could go through my clothes. We wanna set ourselves up for success. So for me, I'm going to do my nightstand. Pop in the comments below the one environment or one aspect of your environment that you're gonna clean up. And for extra accountability, come join my free Facebook group. And when I share this episode in the free Facebook group, talk in the comments about how you felt about the book and how you felt about cleaning your environment and what you see. So without further ado, let's, um, let's get cleaning. Okay, so before I had moved a bunch of stuff into my office space, but this is what my nightstand is looking right now. So like I have my Kobo, my iPad, a book, my notebook, I have my thermometer to take my temperature every morning, my alarm clock. This is my Muse headband, some essential oils, this like, look at this. Like this is just from water. So usually on like full moons, I clean this out to help me release. It's got some like healing crystals and a little floating candle. When it's done properly, it looks really beautiful. This looks like absolute horseshit. Um, I've got just like some hair ties sitting here. There's like a little ring light. Oh look, another fucking hair tie. Page stickers for the book here, two candles. I have a little lighter here. This desperately needs to be cleaned. I don't know if you can see all of this. And then inside too, it's probably just got like water buildup. Yep, that is disgusting. Real, real here. Book, a little slipper hanging out. 
and then some essential oils and then you can also see like this needs a good wipe here or whatnot so like that's what I'm seeing when I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning so I've been having a little bit of trouble waking up in the morning to be completely honest with you and I'm scrolling on my fucking phone before I go to bed which I used to have a hard and fast rule that my phone charged in my office I didn't have my phone charging in here so maybe I need to get back to doing that but instead of having like a relaxing nighttime routine where I used to read and until I felt sleepy or whatever, I'm like scrolling TikTok and, and all of that. So that's not working for me. So let's fucking clean this shit. I love my pets, but holy fuck, do they leave a lot of hair everywhere. say a lot of that was like essential oil buildup so it's really easy to just kind of wipe off looks so much better. I hate that I know, you know? I know that cleaning makes me feel better. I know that having a good environment makes me feel better. I'm like 
excited to wake up to that now. I'm excited to go to sleep to that now and to have my Kobo beside me and not like my iPad where I'm gonna do work before bed and not all those hair ties and all of the dust and I haven't been using my humidifier slash diffuser for at least a week or two now because I was avoiding cleaning it. Really, really enjoy that. So let's go back to the assignment here. Once you've completed the assignment, write down how it went. So I think it went pretty well. I'm honestly glad I chose something smaller. I'm glad I chose something that was tangible. Not that cleaning my closet isn't tangible, but like there's so much shit in there. Like it's just it's gonna be a project. It's gonna be a project and I just feel feel like vlogging, learning how to vlog, shifting into vlogging is already a project. So then to add something else that was really daunting on top of that was just kind of setting myself up to fail. So I'm glad I chose and shifted to something that was a bit more tangible for me. Um, which area did you choose to clean up? I chose to clean up my nightstand. What changes did I make? I got rid of the stuff that didn't need to be there. I didn't need two different candles there to be completely honest. Well, three if I count my floating candle, which isn't that so pretty. I made that with some little crystals that I got and then a floating candle and the glass was a dollar. It's a, it's a stemless wine glass that I got from Superstore for a dollar and I just, I made it myself. So I think it's so cute. I got rid of that, got rid of the just like riffraff that didn't need to be there, including the dust. So that felt really good. How did I feel before I started? <laughs> I was daunting. I was dreading it, to be honest. And I'm not gonna lie, I think there was a little part of me, the ego part of me that was like, what's the point of doing this? Like, is it really gonna make me feel that much better? And um, how do I feel now? Yeah, it did. A, I feel like I accomplished something. So whenever you accomplish something and you knock something off your to-do list or you like start a project and see it to completion, it like releases something in your brain of success and achievement and that just I'm gonna carry that through me for the rest of the day now feel really good about that and then she also says like next week keep going so like I could do my closet next week when it's not something that I have to film or whatnot so yeah I'm really really happy I did that let me know in the comments below what piece of environment you chose to clean up it could be just like unfollowing people on social media that don't make you feel good it could be you know, setting boundaries around a friend that's just kind of an energy vampire. It could be cleaning up your car. It could be any one of those things. So let me know in the comments below what you chose to clean. Or remember, you can join my free Facebook group, comment on the video in the group, what you chose to clean, how you felt about it. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this week one vlog of Bear by Susan Hyatt. It's a seven week program that I am vlogging. If you did enjoy it, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button so that you are notified whenever a new vlog comes out. If you'd like to support the channel, you can hit the Kofi link in the description below to access my exclusive content shop. Maybe peek around at my membership levels or just send me a, a chai latte. I love you so, so much, and I will see you next week when we are adding pleasure to our day. Just hit the record button, Carolina. Just hit it. I look a little haggard, but we're gonna do this. What do I wanna say? <laughs> Why is this so hard? Fucking hell. And look at my nails though. Are they cute?